Day 7. Watch and Pray. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. My friends, we need to be constantly fighting against sin and temptation, or sin and temptation will easily and quickly overcome us. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. How is movie watching, for example, fighting against sin? How is it being watchful? How does it bring you closer to Christ? How is it feeding your soul? It doesn't. Not only this, but carefully consider all your habits and desires. The music you listen to, the friends you keep, the places you go, the time you spend. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13.20 Psalm 55 Evening and morning and at noon will I pray, and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Are you a person of earnest prayer? Morning and evening you go to the Lord in prayer. You cry to him for mercy, for power, for strength against evil. Arise early in the morning for the Lord. Fall on your knees. Wrestle with him in prayer. Pour out your heart to him. Your burdens, your failings. Sincerely ask for full deliverance. And never stop. You see, there is a big temptation. For pride to get in the way. You, you become wary of asking for mercy. You, you become wary and prideful to ask for forgiveness and victory over the sin. You keep failing and failing, right? And so you become arrogant or you become discouraged and you stop praying, you stop asking. And this is where apostasy occurs. This is where you are prone to leave the faith, to give up, to turn your back on Christ. If you turn your back on prayer, you will turn your back on Christ. James 5.16, confess your faults one to another, pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, availeth much. Too often we underestimate the power and importance of prayer. Confess to the Lord. Pour out your heart to him. Acknowledge how weak you are. Acknowledge. Tell him that you struggle, that you have these evil thoughts and desires. You have these evil memories and imaginations. The very moment you feel any lustful desire, the very moment some evil thought or memory enters your mind, go to God in prayer. Pray immediately. Fight against sin straight away. Delay not. Delay not. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee, while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee 
in the night watches do the same thing in the evening wake up early pray seek the lord in the morning but at night at the the night watches meditate on the lord meditate on his promises consider his loving kindness and his presence better than life praise him morning and evening go to him be satisfied in your soul for him and not for these carnal pleasures that only grieve your soul that only cause you trouble cause you guilt you feel terrible about this sin even the inclination even the thought even the memory you feel horrible that you desire such vile things so they're so disgusting so disgusting how can you like this stuff be satisfied in christ be satisfied in the presence of the lord you don't have to keep falling and falling over and over again in this wickedness in this wickedness deuteronomy 4 29 but if from thence thou shalt seek the lord thy god thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul consider reading a portion of scripture before praying especially the psalms meditate on the beauty glory and promises of our gracious and holy god seek him with all your heart not half-heartedly if you feel cold pray david's prayer hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me if you feel cold and dull in your prayer pray that you pray and confess your coldness and dullness confess it to the lord and ask that he would revive you that he would help you against coldness and dullness that he would grant, grant you peace of conscience of all the means of grace there is none which is more valuable than prayer comprising the several parts of adoration thanksgiving confession supplication and intercession upon your knees and looking up into the compassionate face of your heavenly father you are in that posture which above all others and is most suited to the exercise of faith hope love and every christian grace if you decline the declension will commence just here the maxim is true apostasy begins at the closet let no slight reason satisfy you for having omitted your devotions just as you are not content with excuses for having omitted your necessary meals the evils to be avoided are forgetfulness infrequency irregularity formality wandering of mind undue brevity irreverence coldness and unbelief question yourself as to each of these points in particular beware of confining yourself to silent prayer but in your regular devotions employ audible utterance because the voice has a great influence upon the feelings have set times for prayer at least every morning and evening and if possible a set place for it in accord with the admonition pray without ceasing let your thoughts during the employments of the day often go up in sudden prayer or even excited prayer which is so called because such aspirations like arrows shot up towards heaven and blessed is he that hath his quiver full of them again i remind you the moment you feel any urge any lustful desire any inclination towards evil go to god immediately in prayer call upon him go without delay listen to a solemn sermon listen to an awakening sermon a sermon focused on the beauty and glory of christ or focused on holiness read a key scripture for example you may meditate and lie down listen to the audio bible of passages like romans 6 galatians 5 parts of psalm 119 the first few psalms psalm 1 psalm 2 meditate on the word of god consider the will and strictness and holiness and purity and glory of god charles spurgeon said we shall never see much change for the better in our churches in general 
till the prayer meeting occupies a higher place in the esteem of Christians. I would implore you to go to your church's midweek prayer meeting. Usually it's Wednesday, perhaps Thursday. Ask your pastor, ask your elders, when is the prayer meeting? Why don't you have a prayer meeting if there is none? Go to the evening service of your church. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's the Lord's day, the resurrection day of Christ. It is a day for him and for his worship. Seek the Lord dil diligently morning and evening. Be a person of prayer and watchfulness. Seeking the Lord early. Seeking the Lord and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't underestimate the power of prayer.